I made a huge mistake when I started trying to overcome my social anxiety. And I see the same mistake being made by a lot of the members inside our social confidence club as well as in my clients. And I want to help you avoid that mistake or stop making it so that you can truly empower yourself and overcome your social anxiety. Because if you keep making this mistake, you will not overcome your social Welcome. anxiety. Hey, it's Seb from Social Anxiety Solutions, where we combine the best of therapy with energy psychology to completely overcome your social anxiety. So what's the mistake I was making when I tried to overcome my social anxiety? I was trying to become socially confident, completely 100% anxiety free, free to be myself, confident talking to strangers, saying whatever comes to mind, not giving up what other people think of me, talking to any attractive girl I wanted, being able to make friends and make everyone my friend. Basically, I created this idealized image of myself, this ideal social Seb. And I then began working on addressing all the problems that are in the way of me being that way. So I could basically become socially perfect. Now, after years of doing this, I actually did make a lot of progress because, you know, tapping is very powerful. I was doing a lot of inner work. I was working with great practitioners. So I did make a lot of progress, but I was still having social anxiety and I was also still blushing. It didn't change until I met my mentor, Dr. David Lake, who's a psychotherapist, a therapist, a therapist, and also a tapping expert. And in our sessions, the focus was brought to acceptance. Acceptance of the anxiety, acceptance of the blushing, acceptance of the undesirable parts of me and the un uh, undesirable emotions, the insecurity, the shame, the part of me that was not cool, the part of me that wasn't funny, the part of me that wasn't smart, and so on. And this is what actually over time led to a complete a neutralization of the problem. So yes, I am anxiety free. It's not a problem in my life and it hasn't been a problem in my life for a long time and I feel comfortable and relaxed and at ease socially. But it was acceptance that helped me get there. Acceptance of the shame, acceptance of the blushing, acceptance of the anxiety. I made room in my inner world for that to exist and still accepting myself while I was feeling ashamed, while I was feeling insecure and no longer needing to be Mr. Socially Perfect. By accepting my weaknesses and my disempowered limiting circumstances slowly over time, basically by becoming a yes to what is, I stopped fearing social anxiety. I stopped fearing blushing. I made room in my inner world for that to be there, for that to exist. I accepted it so that when I would get, become anxious or when I would blush, it didn't mean anything bad about me anymore. It didn't mean that I was a loser or that I was weak or pathetic or not a real man. It was simply an experience that I was having. I was experiencing all the emotions that were passing through and that allowed them to do exactly that, to pass through. And so anxiety no longer triggered a stronger fight, flight, freeze response. This is what it can do. If you experience anxiety over a long period of time, your brain can start to see the social anxiety symptoms like the lump in your throat, heart racing, etc. as it can label those as a threat as well. And so now you notice your heart racing and you get even more anxious. So that went away as well. So it didn't trigger stronger fight, flight, freeze response anymore. It could be with it and just let it go and let it pass. Now, this didn't happen overnight at all. You know, this was a process uh, and it took a lot of time, effort, energy, assistance, but it was so worth it. And the mindset of acceptance was absolutely key. So while the advice I give here might sound counterintuitive, take the following to heart. Stop focusing on trying to be Mr. Perfect socially or Miss Perfect socially, becoming that. Stop trying to become socially confident and instead focus on self-acceptance. Make your suffering okay, even though it's tough and challenging. Make your shame, insecurity and anxiety okay and release your negative judgments. And make your self-judgments and your self-criticism okay because it's just a pattern. Don't judge yourself for the pattern. It keeps you in a loop. Accept everything. Accept you. 
all of you, your emotions, your negative emotions, your difficult emotions, your difficult life circumstances, your limitations because of this, your lack of friendships or lack of ability to connect, your awkwardness socially because of the anxiety, your lack of being able to freely speak your mind, how difficult certain life circumstances are right now, etc. Now, I know that this is a big ask and it doesn't happen overnight, like I said, and it's very challenging to do this, especially if you don't have tapping, but thank God you do have tapping. <laughs> but this is it. This is a essential key to get to social ease, to get to effortless social ease, to freely being yourself socially, you need to have acceptance. For lasting change to happen, acceptance is required. I'll read you this quote that David sent me once. When I can stand in acceptance of where I am, then I open myself up to the possibility of moving beyond that point to another point. I open myself up to the possibility of change. However, the more I am pushed to change, the more I build up resistance against that change and the more impossible change becomes. In this lies the paradox. Change comes not in frantic effort to become someone different, but in aware acceptance of who I am. This is from Gestalt Therapy called The Paradox of Change. Now it makes sense like, oh, I want to change. I gotta push myself. I gotta do something about me. I gotta change myself into someone else. But it's not like that. Change and transformation doesn't mean you're gonna become someone different. You're just gonna feel safe being your true self. And so change is all about making peace with who you are, making peace with your emotions, making peace with your life circumstances, even though they're not the way you want them to be, making peace with where you're at. Joseph Sandler, the British psychoanalyst, described psychotherapy as the process of making friends with the unacceptable parts of ourselves. Because think about it, when you are okay with all of you, now you have nothing to hide. And now you bring all of you to the party. Now you bring all of you to the social interaction. There's nothing you got to hide anymore. How empowering is that? Now I'm going to teach you a simple approach to start the process of acceptance. But before we get to that, I first wanna clean up some misconceptions about what acceptance is. Self-acceptance does not mean, A, that you want, like, or approve of the problems and unhelpful parts of you. B, that you identify with these negative parts as you. C, that you give up on getting rid of your triggers and working towards social ease. That is not what it means. Acceptance means becoming okay with what is. Okay with your emotions, okay with your experience, okay with yourself, all parts of you. The acceptance process. Okay, I'm going to give you something to stop doing with your thinking. I'll give you a mindset and then I'll give you a specific strategy to start using. Okay, first the mindset. Stop being Mr. Socially Perfect. Stop trying to be Mr. or Mrs. Socially Perfect. Now this striving for social confidence takes the form of a lot of should thinking. I should be confident, I should be funny, I should be the best, I should be impressive, I should be cool, I should know what to say, I should be interesting, I should be etc. And also the other side, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be anxious, I shouldn't be awkward, I shouldn't be boring, I shouldn't be lame, I shouldn't be so quiet. This should thinking is decreasing your self-acceptance. So stop shooting on yourself. Because when you do, you're shooting yourself in the foot and that hurts. You're damaging your self-esteem and you're lowering your self-acceptance. And you're making yourself feel more anxious because you're not living up to the standards. Start allowing your imperfections. You are not the anxiety that you experience. You are not the blushing problem that you have. You are not your behavior. You're not your emotions. You're not your thinking. You are the experiencer of that. It doesn't define you unless you decide that it does. Now, this is, of course, all easier said than done. And it's not as easy as, oh, just stop thinking in this way. 
No, you actually, that's, that's why, you know, I'm giving you a lot of therapeutic content here that's very powerful in and of itself, but there's not that much that changes so much other than it increases your awareness and it puts your mindset in a different direction, which is very helpful. But what is more powerful is to sever these patterns at their root. And this is where energy psychology comes in. This is why this is such an exciting, powerful combination. So I'm gonna give you a strategy, and before I give it to you, I just wanna say that this is a helpful strategy, but it's gonna help a little bit, bit by bit, over a period of time. And it's just something that you can start doing. Now there's a lot more that you can do, and there's a lot more powerful stuff that you can do than just this strategy alone. But this is just a simple YouTube video, so just getting you know an introduction to what is possible, a simple strategy that you can apply immediately. And here it is. Whenever you notice yourself negative thinking, whenever you notice yourself feeling anxious, whenever you notice yourself experiencing shame or insecurity or any other negative emotion, start tapping at any point and move from point to point and hold the intention to accept and allow what it is that you're experiencing so that what you're experiencing, you're a yes to it. You're observing it, you're not, you know, you're not associating your identity with it. It's an experience that you're having. So you're holding the counterintuitive intention to accept and allow it. Now this can be very challenging at the beginning, but the more you start doing that, the easier it becomes. So you're becoming a yes to your experience. You're not trying, I know that tapping works to re uh, release stuck negative emotions, and shift limiting beliefs and so on. But this tapping that we're doing, the intention here is very different. It's very specific. It's to allow the experience you're having, to allow the anxiety to complete its cycle, to give room for that sadness to process and so on. There you go, that's the strategy. Now this process interrupts automatic negative thinking. It allows the negative emotions to process and it begins to reduce and release negative emotions connected to thoughts, you know, emotionalized negative thoughts. And it fosters an acceptance mindset. Now all of this empowers you towards more self-acceptance and less social anxiety. Now there is more to becoming social anxiety free than self-acceptance alone. There are two other keys. One is overcoming subconscious resistance, and two is neutralizing that which triggers your social anxiety. But accomplishing acceptance is an essential key to getting there. So don't demand 100% social confidence. Instead, aim for self-acceptance. Accept your flaws and imperfections. Make room in your inner world for anxiety, for parts that you don't like, accept them, accept your emotions, come to terms with behavioral patterns that suck, make acceptance your focus, because that will set the stage for effortless social ease. But self-acceptance is an essential key. Now, if you'd like to boost your self-acceptance in just 10 minutes, I suggest you check out this video here and in that video, I guide you through an emotional release technique, the tapping, and I'll instruct your subconscious to deepen self-acceptance. Go check that out right now, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now.